Hey Pod Squad, welcome to the number one resource for exploring podiatry. I'm Diksha, a third year podiatric medical student, and today we're going to talk about the characteristics that make up a competitive interviewee. Number one, someone who knows exactly why they chose podiatry. So if your tips related to preparing for your application, your interview, right over here. You want to have shadowed enough hours so that you know exactly why you didn't choose MDDO or any other healthcare specialty. Um, because as you all know, this is something where you can't go into it and change your specialty over time or something where you could choose your specialty over time, you are going in knowing your exact specialty. I had made my decision by the second day that I shadowed, but I still made sure to shadow at least two podiatric physicians because you want to also give um, these physicians a chance to get to know you and have something substantial to say in the recommendation letter that you, by the way, should definitely, definitely get for your application. Someone who has put a lot of time and self-reflection into being able to answer the kind of interview questions that are thrown at you. Be able to describe yourself within 30 seconds of time. You kind of have a pitch because the pitch is of the product, which is essentially you. You also want to know your strengths, your weaknesses, why you chose podiatry. You want to know your hobbies and activities well enough that you can describe them in a sophisticated manner. You want to be able to talk about the activities that you did during college and after college. If you have anything lacking in your academics, be able to explain how you've thought about improving. What would you want to know from a student based off of your specific application? Just think of it that way. There are plenty of other interview questions out there, of course, but it's essentially just knowing yourself. Number three, someone who is fully themselves during the entire interview process. I know it's a nerve wracking time for you, but they understand that it's okay to be nervous, but that doesn't mean you hold yourself back and you're not showing your genuine authentic self because authenticity will take you far in medicine. Number four, someone who treats everyone with respect and care. That means even if you are online for the quarantine or you went to the site in person, either way, whoever you meet, there's going to be staff, there's going to be people at the front desk, you want to be on your best behavior. Now that doesn't mean to be closed off. That means be friendly with everyone. So now that you're applying to medicine and you're going to be in medical school, you're going to be held to higher standards. Never forget that. Now number five, this might be obvious to most of you, but make sure that you dress the part. So that means for men, make sure you wear your ties. Okay, obviously you also want the suit jacket, women suit jacket. For the women, also make sure that your dress or your skirt, if you decide to wear one rather than pants, make sure that it's past your knees or at least knee length. And make sure for men and women, your hair is done and you look put together, you look sharp. Make sure your shoes are freshly polished as I like to call it. Number six, someone who reaches the video call or the actual campus 30 minutes before the interview was supposed to take place. That way it helps you as an interviewee with calming your nerves and also the interviewer themselves can see that you are professional and they can trust you with getting to places on time. Number seven, someone who can hold conversations with staff and physicians and all the other individuals you'll come across that day. This has more to do with when you matriculate 
because if you can form at least somewhat of a relationship with these individuals, you can get some contact information from students, of course, from upperclassmen, and you can contact them afterwards and you can talk to them while you're deciding on what programs you want to choose. They can turn out to be incredibly invaluable for this process. Number eight, last but not least, someone who has well thought out questions for the program that they're interviewing at. That shows the interviewer that you care a lot about making a well-informed decision and it actually does help you in the long run, again, when you're deciding on the program. Now that we have equipped you with the resources to dominate your interview, make sure you hit the bell icon below so that you can be informed about the next video, which will be about the six essential resources that will ease your transition into the first year of podiatry school. And don't forget to comment down below to tell us how your interviews went. Pod Squad, signing out.